Mr. President, I'm so privileged to have you as the chair of the steering board of the European uh, Cloud Partnership. And um, you delivered the product of uh, your uh, members and you yourself. Can you tell me a bit more about what is your experience of the steering board and what is really the issue that we should give attention to? Well, let me start a little earlier back. <laughs> What's been happening in the world is that uh, cloud computing has over the past uh, 10 years and especially even more rapidly in the past five, uh, dramatically changed the face of, uh, of computing, of the use of IT in the world. And sadly, uh, Europe has been very slow on the uptake of this. And in fact, uh, that was why you and the Commission decided that we should look into this issue. And so, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me to chair the uh, steering board. Uh, the idea was to uh, bring together uh, representatives of civil society, governments, uh, industry, obviously, not only just companies doing cloud computing, but also those dealing with computer security, um, which is, of course, a big issue in all of this, and to get them all around a table to see what we can do f uh, so that Europe can catch up. Uh, be because of the way things are going, of course, we're not, uh, we're falling more and more behind in this area. And then, of course, I think what really sort of then in the development of our work, what uh, really kicked things off were the revelations of, of spying, which I think focused at least some people's mm -hmm. minds on the issue that this is actually, uh, Europe needs to address the issue of cloud computing. And so uh, we got together over almost a year and a half and uh, and came up with this report that I just presented I'm to you. Yeah. I never forget that first meeting that you were chairing, and that was in a type of fridge and, uh, from f centuries ago. And that at that time, we were all looking forward what could come out of this group, for it is a very diverse group. What are your experiences? Uh, well, I. I um for one, uh, we did coalesce around the key issues. Uh, that was, uh, it became clear that uh, all of the different uh, stakeholders involved, uh, each came with uh, his or her own agenda and expectation. And uh, we found uh, then really, I think we boiled it down to the, to the key issues uh, in a way that uh, everyone was able to sign off on. And certainly the, um, uh, I mean, the key things we must or the next commission will have to address uh, is that if we're going to have cloud computing and remain competitive, then we have to look at, first of all, the kinds of data that we have, because different forms of data require uh, different levels of security. Clearly, if you're going to have simple statistics, it's very different from having health data. Um, there is the issue of data use. I mean, there is there are data that are used for uh, that involved intellectual property rights, for example. Mm -hmm. Clearly, uh, that has to be addressed in the in a uh, pan-European way. I mean, it's <laughs> intellectual property rights are a big issue anyway. But once we get to the cloud, then uh, who has access to what becomes very important. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, we need to be able to enforce our rules. Uh, especially when, say, we look at the financial sector and we, uh, we clearly must be able to, uh, to use, uh, use the power of law to make sure that uh, there is no abuse. Um, but the key issue is really getting it to work at a European level because most of our countries, if not all, have, data legis have legislation that says at least uh, government data may not be stored outside the borders of, of the nation state. Uh, you have own experience. Yes. Well, we, I mean, this, it's, in general, it, this law is understandable, makes sense, these kinds of laws. But, but if we want to develop a cloud then, uh, uh, that will work uniformly across Europe, then we have to... We have to uh, uh, address that issue and uh, we, that again requires us to be able to guarantee to uh, member states that uh, that uh, the using a European cloud for data storage 
uh, is is a perfectly reasonable and good thing to do, and we should be able to change the national legislations to do that. I mean, clearly, if it comes to the digital market, or rather the single market, we digital, all of Digital, by the way, <laughs> digital single market. But, we, bef I mean, in the sort of the, the non-digital single market, we've all made the appropriate changes in our legislation and uh, harmonized our legislation, and it works within Europe. We have not done that when it comes to the, uh, the application of digital uh, technology. And, and here, this is, uh, I would say, uh, is a, a big challenge we face in Europe that unless we take into account the huge size of the, uh, of, uh, the economy that is digital, and we don't have a pan-European single market uh, that works digitally, we will simply fall behind. And uh, you've, looking at the numbers, uh, uh, it's pretty depressing to see how far behind Europe is. I mean, Europe is 500 million people. Um, the United States is 300 million people. They have a single digital market, obviously. It's one country. But, okay. but you look at the proportion of the, the percentage of the economy that is experiencing, that is this huge growth, but the, the percentage uh, is, is much, much larger than in Europe because their, their market functions. Ours does not. It's all at a national level, and especially countries like mine, which are small. I mean, it, it's very hard to get that uh, the single digital market working. Uh, and uh, Sure, it's hard. It's hard to change the legislation, but <coughs> if we don't do it, yeah. we'll fall behind. Mr. President, a very naughty question. What would you do, what would be your priorities if you were the next president of the European Commission in this field? <laughs> well, I would make the priority of the next commission making the digital market work, the digital single market work. I would, uh, I would say that uh, whoever is in charge of the single market uh, in the next commission uh, should have a very firm background in IT and a staff that is well versed in uh, in IT, and is has the courage to to create the, a digital single market. Uh, without that, uh, uh, we will be stuck in the uh, I guess the the 1990s as we are going into uh, 2020. Uh, I, I would say that's one of the, I mean, aside from uh, common foreign security policy, that is one of the great challenges uh, that uh, Europe faces because we have to catch up with where the rest of the world is. It's not too late, but we are in a hurry and it is worthwhile to fight for that new world, so to say, for Europe. Absolutely. If we don't... Uh, I mean, I, I think we're, we're. I mean, we we. If we really make a huge effort right now, I think we can uh, we can uh, catch up and uh, and be competitive again. Uh, but uh, I don't think we can afford another five years of inaction in this in this field because uh, then we will simply be back considered a backward area. Could you give a little bit more of your thoughts for this report, establishing a trusted cloud Europe? Absolutely main. But it is so connected with big data, it is connected with so many other areas. So the single market for electronic communications. What is also at stake besides the fact of the trusted cloud? Well, we need to get this, uh, I mean, what this report conceptually is what we can do now before we really do a reform of the yeah. single market and this these are these are there are a lot of things we can do right now uh, and the first first of all is to look at best practices Wh who's done what I mean the kind of example and I can being Estonian I'll pat Estonia's back and say that we have created a national cloud through very uh, some a few select uh, changes in legislation. Um, probably the one that's best for the citizen is that the government may never ask you for information that you have already provided the information, which reduces the amount of paperwork and time spent on paperwork or even computer work uh, so much that it's, I mean, speeds everything up. Uh, uh, 
means you don't have to put in your address every time you <laughs> deal with the, uh, with the government, for example, let alone all kinds of other things that you must provide. Um, that kind of uh, legislation, we have developed a technology that allows us uh, to communicate very, very securely uh, government to government, people to government, government to business, people to business. Uh, they, our citizens prefer to use our system to, uh, I mean, even commerce, to using credit cards, which are not at all as secure. Now, this system that we have, we call it XROAD. It's a uh, distributed uh, data exchange layer for those who want to know more specifically. Uh, Finland, our neighbor, has now basically looked at the system and say they want to do it too. And the way I, will, I see the future is that well, they will adopt our system or ha are adopting it right now. We've already have the agreement. And services, access to banks, pharmacies, medical records, all of these things that are in our cloud, um, they will have two. And then we will make it interoperable. So a Finn in Estonia can take out his prescription anywhere in Estonia, uh, vice versa. I mean, an Estonian who gets sick in Finland, the doctor can immediately access the uh, medical records of the Estonian. Uh, and so the, the alternative path uh, to having a pan-European legislation is that one by one governments or countries will adopt systems that are interoperable and uh, we can do it that way. That's kind of the, uh, that's kind of like doing root canal work. <laughs> I mean. And could you explain a little bit more your experience with privacy for people are scared and certainly when you are talking about their health um, uh, issues that it is safe and that it is to be trusted? Well, we, uh, the system that we have is, uh, by current estimates, is the encryption layer yeah. is, at a, is at a level that will be safe for another 30 years. I mean, this is, again, looking at Moore's law, you would predict that maybe in 30 yeah. years, computing power will be uh, powerful enough to decrypt uh, the, our current layer of or level of security. but. Uh, and for the technically minded, it's RSA 2048, but that's just, I mean, that's a very high level of encryption uh, that has not been broken. And so uh, people trust the system, uh, and we have not had uh, the experiences of, um, that, the, that we've seen elsewhere. You cannot steal a password uh, in the way that... Uh, <laughs> You see all the time, again, 10 million passwords are stolen or a million passwords are stolen and you know, people's data are all, the data are available to anyone or sold. You, you cannot do this uh, if you have a two-layer security system at, with such a high level of encryption. <clears throat> so we don't, our people are not worried about that. Uh, it is secure and has been secure, and uh, so too private companies love it, and banks love it, because they're not subject to the kinds of uh, thefts, which is, <clears throat> but we see, I mean, all the other kinds of things are just as bad in my country as elsewhere. I mean, if you use credit cards, um, they're not secure, and, you know, I, I, everyone I know somewhere sometime in the past 10 years has found that someone's used their credit card number even though they weren't there or in the country that it was used. Uh, so there are technological solutions that work and that, in, uh, that people trust. Um, and uh, I guess where the problem is, is the level of knowledge of the technological solutions that exist today uh, that uh, would allay the fears of legislators and politicians uh, who say, oh, no, we can't do this. What would be the message to my neighbor who is not trusting such a new development? What would be the best line you could imagine? I would say look, uh, look at where it works. Uh, and that's, I mean, it works. Uh, and I'm not saying the Estonian solution is the only, uh, the only solution. It's one that works uh, and one that has attracted a lot of interest around the world, in fact. Uh, I was just in Japan and they were really intrigued by what we, were, what we are doing uh, and have actually researched our system very thoroughly. 
Uh, but there are other ones as well, and uh, and the countries that are moving in this direction, uh, actually, oddly enough, in Europe, have nothing to do with geography, have nothing to do with GDP per capita, has nothing to do with uh, with uh, time of entering the European Union, has nothing to do with size. But uh, it's just the the kind of willingness within member states to move ahead or not move ahead. Mr. President, I'm absolutely certain that uh, a lot of people will uh, use the public consultation about this report till the 2nd of May uh, it can be yeah, done. Looking forward to all your interventions. And thank you very much, Mr. President, for your willingness to accept the chair of the board and publish this excellent report. Uh, I'm looking forward to all those reactions of the viewers and of those who, for one reason or another, are interested in the cloud um, issues. And uh, you can still uh, react uh, till the 2nd of May. Looking forward and uh, thank you again for what you have done and what you are going to do. And sorry for the naughty questions. No problem. Thank you. Yeah.